In this video, I'll show you how to create a user defined member property that you can assign to different beams and columns and so on. So without further ado, let's begin. Hi, I'm Kushal from hashtag begin. This is a series I'm doing on Start Pro. The coming week would be entirely on website development. If you're new to Start Pro, consider joining my private Facebook group where I share some awesome content for you. Also, you can ask me questions out there. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, please do so and do hit that notification bell. Uh, it is your love and support that keeps me going. Well, without further ado, let's dive into the software. So head over to your desktop, double click on the Start Pro icon to launch the software. I'll be creating a new project. I'll name it User Properties. I'll just select everything, copy the name and I'll paste it on my desktop. This is a small trick I use. You can follow my other video for it. I'll just click a path to create. I'm leaving the default unit as it. So I've shared several videos on how to create the geometry part. So I'll not be going into that. I'll be just creating a very simple frame. I'll just click out of it. Although I don't need it, this is just for the demo purpose. Now, as I said in one of my videos on how sh you should be using Strat Pro, so we are we haven't entered anything in the setup, but you can do it. We have we are done with the geometry in a in a way. And next is going to the general. So the first tab in the general is property. In the property tab, the data area is a bit changed. Now in this video, particularly we'll be just using the user defined properties. So I'll just click on this define. I'll be touching about everything else in a later video. For now, I'll just click on define. And this window pops up. Now in most of the cases of concrete design, you will be using a property which will be defined by you, a dimension which, which would be defined by you. However, when it comes to designing uh, steel structures, you'll be prob you'll probably be using some codal dimensions. In this case, we'll be just dealing with these options. So I'll show you everything one by one. The first option is the circle. So you can create a single solid circular member. You can give the depth as much as you want. For example, in our case, let me give it 2.6 say. Whenever you're creating a property, there are two steps involved. The first is creating the property. And the second step is assigning that property on whichever member you want. So the first option is, or the first aspect is to create the circle. So in this case, I'm creating the solid bar of 0.6 meter height or diameter. I'll just click on add and I'll click on close. So this property is created. Now I need to assign it to either of these members. Let me assign it to one of them to show you. So I'll just use this cursor to assign command. So the assignment method, we have four methods. You can assign it to the selected beams. If I've already selected a beam, this option would have been available. The next is to use the cursor to define. The next is to just make a point out the members out here by listing them. And the finally is to use the assign to view. So in our case, just let me use cursor to assign. I'll just click on assign. And as soon as I bring my cursor into the graphical window, you'll see it change. So it is changed to an I beam. I'll just click on one of the sections to give the property. And now you can see the property is given. The I'll just click on assigning to get back. Now you can see it, it says R1. The R stands for ref or the reference. And one is whichever reference it's talking about. So R1. I'll just go to my 3D rendered view just to show you how it looks. So as you see, my circular section is created. I'll just click out of it. I'll go back to the define again and I'll keep showing you all the options. The second is the rectangle, which is mostly used in concrete design. By the way, if you missed it, there is an option of giving the material by default. So there are four options available here, the steel, the stainless steel, aluminum and concrete. You can change all the properties and the material later, but this is a good point to start. 
so you can leave this to concrete now in the rectangle there are two options the depth and the width so i'll leave the i'll say give the depth to again 0.6 but i'll give the width to say 0.25 just to show you how it looks in a three dimension again i'll be creating creating it or creating the property and the second part would be assigning the property so i'll just click on add to create it i'll close now i'll probably assign it to this beam say i'll again use the use cursor to assign method click on assign go to assign so now again uh, you can see it says r2 this is for reference to if i go to my 3d view again you can see my beam has been created with a 0 0.5 0 0.25 meter width and a 0 0.6 meter depth so just let me close this 3d rendered view and let me show you some other options as well so i'll go to define the third option is creating a t as you can see from this small window you can give all your values so you can give the top width you can give the entire depth and so on so you can give all these values so let me just give it quickly i'll give the entire depth to say 0.8 i'll give the top zd value to say 0 0.6 i'll give yb to be say 0. 6 again and i'll give zb to be 0.2 i'll just close it so this is a prismatic t section i'll again assign it to this member to to make it clear so i'll just go to use cursor to assign i'll click on assign and i'll click on this so it has changed to r from r02 to r3 i'll go to my 3d rendered view again and you can see i have my tb created I'll just zoom it so that you can see it again I'll go to the define command next is the trapezoid so the values are the same again this is the top width this is the bottom width this is the entire depth so I can just give the entire depth to say 0 0.8 I can give the top width to say 0 0.5 and the bottom width to say 0 0.2 I'll just click on add click on close now to get back to my uh, general property view i can just click on property so i'll select the reference 4 which is the prismatic trapezoid i'll just click on it use the cursor to assign and click on assign and go to assigning it again to this so r r3 changes to r4 again if i see it in my 3d view you can see my trapezoid So the next option is general now this is an entirely custom created member which you will probably not use and if you do you'll have all these ax ay az values as well as the moment inertia values so you can use it in that case i'll i'll not be going into this option the next option as well is for an i section which has varying dimensions in the in the longitudinal direction so you have some section at the front and it is tapering at the end to some other section so as you can see it is saying f1 depth at the section at the start node and f3 depth at the section at end node so you can create various depths from the starting to the end and it will correlate accordingly so i'll just create one to show you so let me keep the depth at the front to be small say 0.6 I'll keep the thickness of the web to say 0 0.1. I'll keep the depth of the section at the end node to say 0 0.0 or say 0 0.9. I'll keep the width at the top flange to be 0 0.4. Thickness at the top flange, I'll keep it at 0 0.1 again. Width at the bottom flange, I'll keep it at 0 0.3 and thickness is again 0.1. I'll just click on add i'll click on close and this time again i'll use cursor to assign and assign it to say this one now let me go to the now let me just click on assigning again i'll just select this member and click on 3d rendered view so you see i have my i beam created and this if i had made a dramatic change it would have been visible I'll probably make a dramatic change just to show you 
how it looks. I'll just go back to the property again. So I'll just double click on the trapezoid to make some big changes. So instead of say depth at the section 2.9, I'll give it three meters. I'll just change it and close it and I'll go to 3D view again. As you can see, I have my tapering I-beam section created. So this you can use if you have such a section in your requirement. So I'll just go to the define option again. Next option is tapered tube. This is similar to the tapered I section, but different just because it is a tube. So you have a hollow tube. You can make it round or various octagonal hexagonal structures and even square is possible. So I'll just leave it to round for first. I'll give the depth at the starting to be say 0.5 and depth at the end to I'll just give it to a dramatic value again say 2 and the thickness of tube I'll give it to 0.1 it will make it more visible I just click on add and close select this use cursor to assign and assign I'll assign it to the top member again click on assign just select this to view it or to view only this in the 3d so you can see I have my tapered round section created. I'll just click on X to exit out of it. And finally, let's go to define again. Finally, is a uh, assigned profile. This will be used when you have a profile created. I'll not be going deep into this as you'll not be using it too much anyways. So I'll just click on close. So uh, these are the various ways in which you can create your own custom defined member property. Now by default you have selected material as concrete you can change it to steel or stainless steel or aluminium or whichever material you want you can just leave the material out of it and create a material later well that is for this video if you like this video do hit that like button also subscribe to our channel and do not forget to hit that notification bell because you won't want to miss any videos in the future so that is all from this video thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one